Now monarch butterflies are traveling north from Mexico through Texas to start breeding. This major spring migration closely resembles the path of the solar eclipse. Joining us live to explain more is Dr. Adam Baker with the Davy Institute. Good morning. Good morning, Zach. How are you doing? So far, so good. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, explain to us this morning the science behind the monarch migration and how it's similar to the path of totality with this eclipse today. Sure. So uh, monarchs have been uh, overwintering for the, the past several months in the highlands of uh, Mexico, central Mexico. and. Uh, they started to wake up just a few weeks ago, and uh, they're getting out of their what they call reproductive diapause. So they're they're gearing up for reproduction and starting to head north, sort of following the same trajectory as the eclipse. Uh, if they, you haven't seen them yet in southern Texas and central Texas, uh, they're on their way, and they'll be there soon. Uh, at that point, they'll start to reproduce and uh, lay some eggs. Uh, after that, that generation will will die off, and successive generations will make their way up all the way up into southern Canada before uh, wow. sort of the end of the season where the milkweed starts to senesce, milkweed, the days yeah. get shorter and colder, uh, where they'll return to that diapause and, and all those individuals will fly thousands of miles back uh, to central Mexico to those overwintering grounds. Dr. Baker, what is the lifespan of a, of a single monarch? Sure, so a, a reproductive monarch isn't gonna live very long. So the ones that you'll see foraging in June, July, and August, um, those are often only gonna live several weeks because mm. uh, re, you know reproduction is expensive for insects, it's costly. Uh, but the uh, migrating monarchs will live for months, um, you know, six months or so, where they'll, uh, they're not breeding, they're not engaged in that activity, and they are more concentrated on the migration aspect. And that migration sort of calls some of the weaker genetics and some of the diseased individuals. Uh, but once they wake up again, uh, they'll move in uh, out of that diapause. So it kind of just depends if it's a breeding uh, reproductive yeah. monarch or if it's a migrating monarch. Yeah, uh, I grew up in the Adirondacks in upstate New York, and I, I spent time in Minneapolis. Both uh, locations are very um, conscious about the monarch population. Uh, they're very well aware people who live in those regions uh, know that that population is declining, and they're taking efforts to, to try to slow that decline. Uh, what is causing this decline in uh, monarch population, and, and what can we do about it? Sure. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a pretty complicated, multifaceted mm -hmm. thing that's happening here. It's a combination of our uh, the way that we manage our landscapes from our agricultural monocropping to uh, the sterilization of our landscapes um, to use of pesticides mm -hmm. and climate change and a, a whole a whole bunch of things working in unison that's that's sort of combating uh, the monarch population. Uh, however, there are some things that we can do, especially uh, for where you guys are at in Texas. Um, it's really important to have host plants available. Uh, which are going to be milkweeds. Uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, green milkweed, the Asclepias viridis, is a really important house plant for early season monarchs uh, in Texas, as well as having uh, nectar sources available uh, during the migration phase. So uh, having things blooming right around this time of year um, and choosing plants with those small discrete nectaries, things like you know echinaceas uh, that monarchs and other butterflies love to utilize. And then also having fuel and in, in the form of nectar and pollen on the return trip. So having things blooming in late summer and fall when the monarchs are passing through once again. So things like Mexican sunflower or the solidagos, the golden rods are going to be great late season resources uh, for those butterflies to utilize. But uh, for everyone else outside of Texas, same thing applies. You know, have those milkweeds available during the breeding season. It's the sole larval host plant of the monarch larvae. And have nectar plants available for both the foraging time as well as the migration. Yeah. Okay. All good information. Dr. Baker with the Davy Institute, thank you so much for your time this morning.